Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up and use loop lighting for a very flattering effect in your portrait photography. Hey, it's Matt Anderson from Viewfinder Mastery here, where we teach you all kinds of skills that help you take your photography further. If you're new here, make sure to click that subscribe button and you'll find all of the links to everything that we've used for equipment in this video down in the description box below. Light is such a crucial aspect of portrait photography and it's such an important creative factor when it comes to the mood and the look of your photos. So in this video, we're going to explore a technique called loop lighting which is a very flattering light on almost anyone and will give your photos a sort of cinematic look. In fact, this technique was made popular in Hollywood back in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, and I think I even heard some actresses like Audrey Hepburn even negotiated it into their filming contracts that they were only to be photographed with loop light, so that must mean something. In this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to set it all up. Plus, we're including a bonus DIY hack at the end, which you won't want to miss, so stick around. Okay, we are joined by the beautiful Margarita today, and it looks like she's all ready to go, so let's get into it. Okay, first things first, what the heck is loop lighting? It gets its name from the loop-like shadow, which forms between the subject's nose and upper lip, meaning that the direction of the lighting, in this case, is from the top downward. This lighting technique works well on just about anyone and is especially handy if you want to reduce the volume in a person's face because it's kind of like adding a darkening makeup underneath the cheekbones. Loop lighting is a great one to practice because it's not complex and it doesn't require lots of gear. One light is really all we need in this case. Remember, the more you practice, the more you'll be able to master these skills and shoot like a pro. So get your gear out and give it a try. So any flash will do, and in fact, you could even improvise lots of different light sources for creating a loop light. Hard light and soft light will both work, and it just depends on what you prefer and what gear is available to you. We're using a studio flash today from Profoto, simply because we can attach this amazing reflector called a beauty dish, which is really ideal for demonstrating this technique. The beauty dish is gonna soften the light for us, and the grid that we're attaching to the front is gonna channel the light straight forward to keep it from spilling onto our background. To suspend all this gear safely over my subject, I'm using a heavy-duty C-stand, which allows me to position the light right over her without the stand being visible in my shot. Okay, in case you're interested, I'm shooting today on a Sony A9 Mark II with an 85 millimeter lens that was sent over by my friends at PM Photo Media in Lucerne. Thanks very much, guys. I'm really enjoying this lens. By the way, this technique will work with any camera and any medium length lens. It's the light that's much more important here than anything else. Take a look at how my light is not directly centered over Margarita's head, but it's rather off to the side a bit, almost at a 45 degree angle. That is what's gonna throw a nice little loop shadow underneath her nose and slightly off center on her upper lip. If the light was positioned directly overhead, the shadow would fall straight down and we would end up with more of a butterfly light, which is also beautiful, but it's not exactly what we're going for in this case. If you'd like to see a little bit more detail in the shadow areas on the face, you could use a very simple reflector board like this styrofoam board from the hardware store, and you could just bring that in about chest level, and that'll kick a little bit of light up into those shadows and give you a little bit more detail. And if you don't have anything to clamp this in place with, you could just hand it to your subject and have her hold that in place for you. Works well enough. So I encountered a little bit of a problem with my reflector board as I positioned that in front of Margarita. She was having a little bit of a hard time coming up with poses where she didn't actually knock into the board itself. So we pulled it out of the way and we put up a, another studio light with an umbrella, big white umbrella. It's right behind the camera and it's just putting a nice soft fill light into the shot. It's helping open up those shadows and Margarita is able to move around and pose and come up with some really dynamic looks for me. Okay, we made one other really good improvement to the shot by putting up a third studio light. This one's got a grid in the reflector and we're pointing this back 
behind Margarita um, at the back of the head and shoulders. It's creating a nice little outline hair light, which is separating her from the background. And this is great because with her darker hair, we were having a bit of an issue with her blending into that darkness behind. So this is really helping create a little bit more dimensionality in our shot. Okay, I promised a bonus hack, so here it is. A beauty dish is an expensive and specialized item which creates amazing light. There's nothing like it, except maybe a simple white studio umbrella with a black piece of arts and crafts foam pinned onto the front like this. Problem with white studio umbrellas like this is that they tend to be much brighter in the center, which is also the part that's closest to your subject. You can reduce this problem by eclipsing the center of your umbrella with a black piece of arts and crafts foam or something similar. Just wedge it over the pointy part of the umbrella like that. It's not a perfect match, but I bet most people couldn't tell a huge difference if you put these photos side by side. Total investment, apart from the umbrella, is about $1 US. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thanks very much for helping us out, Margarita. And we've got a lot more waiting for you where that came from, so head on over to viewfindermastery.com where we've got full-length tutorials, thoughtful feedback, and a really fun community of photographers that are waiting for you to join in. And while you're there, go ahead and download our free Top 10 Purchases Guide if you'd like some advice on must-have gear items that won't break the bank. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss our next video, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.